everybody, I'm Danny Otto. Welcome into an all new episode of That Recap Show. In honor of the holiday season, we've been going through some of our favorite classic holiday movies. And today's is no different. It is the much debated holiday classic, Die Hard. So without further ado, yippee ki yay, mother... Poppin' Off presents... That Recap Show. Joining with me to go over the much debated holiday classic Die Hard, it's Johnny Rico. Now I have a machine gun. <laughs> ho, ho, ho. Yeah. Well. <laughs> I got in my catchphrase before we even started. I was so excited to say it. I don't know how much of it got through, but yeah. Hey, I you were stoked. <laughs> What'd you say? I said you were stoked. <laughs> Absolutely. And in honor of, you know, the, the holiday classic Die Hard, uh, uh, I went with the tropical theme. In, instead of my holiday attire this time mm, yeah <laughs> we got palm trees you know we got we got some stuff um, but but yeah like look I'll, I'll, I'll kick this off right away we're we are not here to debate if die hard is a holiday classic movie or or if it's just a regular a- action film i believe it's the best of both worlds um and and the the the, the only thing i'm going to say no argument here whether you 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 know, treat it as a regular action film, whether you treat it as a holiday film, everything is fair game. But I will say the very first music that we hear in this entire film is Christmas in Hollis by Run DMC, a Christmas classic. Christmas music. This is Christmas music. So, I mean, I'm just, I'm just saying, (laughs) I'm just saying, Uh, but anyway, there is so much that that I really appreciate and and love about this movie. And look, I'm going to try to mention some of them and without creating a really long list. But before I get into anything, Rico, what were some of your you know instant reactions from Die Hard? Uh, yeah, I mean the debate around this movie, I think, is kind of silly. I feel like I mean, there's enough elements of Christmas in it at, at, for it to be considered a Christmas movie. If, um, and honestly, at, at the end of the day, it's really all subjective. Like you can put your right. own criteria of what you consider a right. Christmas movie. Um, when I watch this, I'm like, yeah, it's, it's, it, it throws in elements of Christmas, like, you know, with the ho-ho reference with, with the machine gun, of course, and, and on all that. Uh, and there's the, just the fact that it's, it, it's obviously based during Christmas and uh, it, it kind of plays into that whole, like, you know, it, it plays into things quite a bit. Um, so, yeah, I think it, it perfectly fits into that that mold. Um, I've only seen this movie really a, a, a few times throughout my life. I've, I've, it's never really been like a, a must watch every year for me. Um, but I, I certainly love it. Like, and I, 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 it's hard to deny that it's an all-time classic movie, um, especially in the action genre for sure. Uh, it's, I think this is definitely Bruce Willis, like, it, it, like his peak, uh, Bruce Willis mode, like just kind of his his classic one-liners after killing people and the way he's just kind of playing it cool the entire time. Uh, but then he's also kind of able to kind of be like this, uh, like the uh, a man of emotion as well, like a man with a yeah. heart. Um, I like it. It's kind of funny, like all the stuff that we see these these classic action cliches now are all just like kind of thrown in this movie. So when you, it's just kind of one thing after another, but so, but it's it's all done together really well. It's really well structured uh, and really well written, and it's got some great music and some um, amazing performances, which I'll get into later. Uh, but yeah, th- this movie is just a, a really a fun movie to watch from beginning to end, and uh, uh, yeah, it was a really it was fun to to kind of go back and, and watch it again. Yeah, not only is it fun to, to rewatch this, and, and look, I totally understand, like, everyone has their own kind of, you know, holiday must-watches every year. This is definitely very high on my list. This is, mm-hmm. this is, I, I watched yeah, it. This is I your mean, pick. I, yeah, I watched it in prep for doing this, but also I will be watching it on Christmas Eve. Like, that's, like, my tradition is I always watch this on Christmas Eve. I may watch this and Die Hard with a Vengeance on Christmas Eve just to, you know, continue it. But, um... What I do have to say, which is also I, I strongly me- recommend watching, is I don't know if you've watched some of the uh, like the movies that made us uh, the the documentary series type of thing. Some of them, yeah, yeah. They have one for Die Hard. 
Oh, and cool. it's incredible. Yeah, I probably have to watch it again now. That's more fresh in my mind. It's so cool because, um, you know, we, we look at, at um, Bruce Willis as an action star and stuff like that. But pre this movie, this is the movie that made him an action star. Mm-hmm. Because pre this movie, he was only known for, like, some TV show work and, and some, like, goofy romantic comedy movies. Yeah, he's super young in this. Yeah. So, like, this is what made him an action star type of thing. This movie. Mm-hmm. This movie. The movie that made him. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> but yeah. I strongly recommend watching uh, that. I mean, the entire series, but, like, the series, specifically the episode on Die Hard because it's got so much, like, just behind-the-scenes stuff and talking about things that, like, I I I... I don't want to just repeat all of it. It's just so interesting to me. Like they have one on Ghostbusters also, which is like another movie that's like near and dear to my heart is the, the original Ghostbusters movie. Yeah. Um, they do the exact same thing with that. They give you just a, a, a deeper appreciation of like all the filming and, and everything that went into the movie and, and stuff like that. But just like the, the little tidbits, I think that that series does for the movies gives the rewatch of the actual movies, like just the little added things that are, that are, you get into it and it's just it i don't know it for me especially like i said because die hard is one of my must watches uh around the holiday season it, it really adds that kind of stuff um yeah there's so many things i can't wait to talk about in this movie uh do you want to get to some big takeaways yeah let's do it awesome all right i'm gonna give up big takeaways um there, like, like I've been saying, there's, there's so many things that I, I don't want to turn this into a list of, of just like, remember that part? It was awesome. But <laughs> what I really do appreciate about this movie is that we really did kind of combine genres. We have an action movie and we kind of have a holiday twist on it type of thing. And I, I don't think we were really seeing that kind of thing. Like now we do have that kind of thing. Like we even had it for kids. We had Home Alone. That was a, a holiday action movie because we had, you know, all the traps that Kevin McAllister was setting and, and stuff like that. So it was kind of it had action-y parts. Um, and, and now now we have lots of holiday action movies. Like we had the most recent one where Dan Harbour was uh, Santa Claus and that was oh, a whole yeah. action yeah. movie thing. So it's like its own genre now. But this kind of combined elements from an action movie and set it in the holidays and it kind of combined both of them in together. So it, it really did a really good job of kind of slowly, I guess, carving the path to, hey, we can have action movies based around holidays type of thing. So I thought that was a, a really cool like overall thing that this movie kind of was able to do. Um, I got to give a shout out to Argyle, the limo driver, because <laughs> uh, my some of my favorite parts in the movie is when we have all the craziness that's happening. You know, we... we it's one of the most uh, oblivious dudes on the right, planet, dude. Right. I don't understand we have all. all of the there must action. be a really good sound system inside that limo. Yeah, we have all of the action going on that every once in a while, they do it like two or three times at least. They just cut away from like horrible things that are happening. Bruce Willis is like covered in blood and, and all this stuff. Um, and... All of a sudden, it'll cut to Argyle, and he's just sitting there. He's having he's having a conversation on the car phone. He's having a drink. I'm like, aren't yeah. you supposed to be driving later? And you're <laughs> drinking. Like, I don't. This guy is like totally irresponsible. And okay, and that's not even the most dangerous thing he does. At the end of the movie, when everything's all said and done, he just plows yeah. through the scene to go pick up John and and his and his wife. And you're just like, dude, they could have just shot you if it is that like you just plowed um, through. Yeah, like John has to like tell it's him crazy. to put the gun down. Type of it's thing. crazy. That guy's a nutcase. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. But he's the best damn limo. He earns John's respect because he's like, hey, I'll give you a ride if things don't work out. And it's like, <laughs> I like how. So there's some weird things in this. So I, I I do realize they try to portray John McClane as like the common dude type of thing, and that's why like. He's he's ever been in a limo before, so he does, it's like this is weird, and and he doesn't like flying and all of this like stuff. Um, but it was just so weird to be like he goes, he gets in the the front of the limo. Like I'd feel more awkward. I've I've ridden in a limo one time in my entire life, <laughs> entire life one time. Um, I would feel more awkward riding in the front seat of the limo than riding in the back seat. I feel I would feel awkward getting a limo. I think it's also if you're myself. riding in a limo, limo by yourself too. I think that's also for like maybe an right. element for me is like, oh wow, it's like sitting on this there's all this space by myself. It feels weird. I got <laughs> so, so here with you. <laughs> yeah. One one really quick funny holiday story. So I used to go in and out of the city every day for work. The holiday season, things got really crazy, stuff like that. I got picked up on a bus or by a bus one time going into the city for a shift. 
and I was the only one on the bus. And I felt mm. even more awkward. That's <laughs> not. Nice. I used to like felt. being the first one on the on the school bus. So sometimes that would be not really a fun. school bus, but a regular oh, yeah. bus. But, like, just a, a bus too. But like, ooh, I can just walk around. I am the <laughs> only guy on the bus sitting yeah. in traffic, bumper to bumper traffic. I'm like, do I sit in the seat behind the driver and just talk to him? Do I sit in the very back? Like, I was like, I don't know what to do here. Like. It was just weird. It was just me being awkward for about an hour. Mm. So anyway, back 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 to this. Um, but yeah, there was just there there's so many interesting things. Also, when we go back, like all these retro movies that we are watching, seeing how different, like like uh, John McClane has a cigarette in in the airport. It's, it's mm. like you know what I mean. Yeah. It's just like Definitely walking through the airport of the time. For yeah. Sure. Just so many like just like different things like that that were coming to mind that that, that were just kind of weird. Um, but but yeah, I, I I really do appreciate kind of all of the 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 little things that went in the movie. Like we were starting to talk about this, you know, even before uh, we started recording, where like there are legit funny moments. And the first one that came to mind for me was there at one point one of like the 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 robbers happens to be like by the the magazine counter or something like that and he puts his stuff down and he just kind of like looks around like this and you think like maybe he's gonna like you know check the cash register because they're stealing a whole bunch of bear bonds so what's <laughs> a little bit more money um but no he reaches into like the candy counter and just starts taking candy like just mm-hmm. little like just like weird things to me are are like kind of bring this more to like they they kind of flesh it out more i guess and i like yeah. Like and and with me, I've had so many rewatches. Like these these kind of things, just like things that I didn't always catch uh, in in like initial watchings or when you're watching for for a part that you're really excited about and and stuff like that. But yeah, there, there's just there's there's so much to appreciate about this movie. Like this is this always makes me excited when when I get to watch this. And then I was telling you about like you know how how this connects to kind of my second favorite Die Hard movie, Die Hard with a Vengeance, and how. how that all comes about and stuff like that. That just, I, I like Die Hard so much. <laughs> but anyway, Rico, what were some of your takeaways from Die Hard? Um, yeah, there's a, there's a couple things I want to point out. First of all, there's a few really funny moments in the movie for me that um, I, I, I just get a kick out of whenever I watch it. Uh, one is just the, the two FBI agents, uh, Johnson and Johnson. I think that's <laughs> just a really funny uh, like running joke that happens when like you know one one's on the radio and goes it's Johnson no not that one it's like <laughs> <laughs> and then for when they introduce you like not related <laughs> yeah uh, and I just love like the little jokes that they kind of have when they're they're bantering but then all of a sudden at like, the end of the movie the guy turns into like 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 he's in uh like Rambo or something like that he's in the helicopter he's got his freaking headband on with the machine gun I'm like what the heck is going on like this guy's going crazy like he's, he's like, just like Saigon or whatever yeah. he said uh, <laughs> and he goes uh, I was 10 the other guy goes like yeah, I, I goes, was 10. 12 <laughs> yeah. uh, so yeah I like that that's a really funny moment and probably the hardest I laugh in the entire movie is at one point um, John's making his way up to like the roof or something like that and he cuts his way uh, into a room and the, the camera like you know pans over and the, on the walls of a picture of like you know some some, some titties and stuff like that. Oh yeah! And, and as soon as that happened, the music just goes ding, and it just keeps <laughs> like going back with the music. So it's like I gotta give a shout out to the late Michael Kamen, uh, who did the score for the movie. Uh, it was just wonderful music work there. Like when that part happened, I I literally like cackled laughing. It was it was <laughs> hilarious. And uh, when I looked up Michael Kamen, I was like, why does his name sound so familiar? Uh, he was the leader of the San Francisco uh, Symphony that also was a part of the Metallica S&M album. Uh, wow. So that's kind of like a cool little thing. Like he, so he worked on that and on Die Hard. So I was like, dang, that was <laughs> freaking awesome. Uh, so that was really one of my uh, like a, a best laugh out loud moment for me in that movie was that for sure. Uh, <laughs> but also just really just at the end of the day, we just, um, it's hard not to acknowledge uh, late. Alan Rickman as Hans Gruber in this movie that he without a doubt probably steals the show. Uh, um, every time that he's on screen, it's, it's, it's captivating, captivating from beginning to end. Um, I like the way that he, like the, the first of all, the, the scenes between him and John through just through the, uh, the walkie talkie are great. Um, but I also especially love the scene where they kind of first uh, interact with each other face to face. And he kind of pretends to be uh, kind of a hostage that got away. And then yeah. of course, like I'm John McClane. You're, uh, Clay. 
And just that, just the first of all, just that whole the way those two play, actors played off each other in that scene is amazing because Bruce Willis is awesome as that as well. When they kind of play, he plays it back on Hans on uh, by saying like, "You really think I was gonna give you a load again?" Uh, so I love all that. Um, and of course, like the way he would also like deal with the hostages as well. Like even though he was like you know uh, threatening their lives, and he, he he ultimately was gonna blow them up on the roof later on, but he was like you know when one of them would ask for something, he would kind of accommodate them. Like he was yep. he was doing stuff like kind of like by the book. Well, you know, so to speak, but he wasn't just doing stuff to be like, oh, I'm going to be terrorizing. Like he was very like calculated. And I think that's what makes him stand out as one of the all time great villains in cinema for sure. And uh, yeah, I just, I really just miss Alan Rickman as an actor. I think we, you know, thankfully we got a, a wonderful uh, Snape performance of him in the Harry yeah. Potter movies, but it really been cool to see what he would have been doing in these later years uh, of his career for sure. Yeah, absolutely. And that scene where he puts on like the California, like uh, West Coast accent. I was is, like trying to pick out how much different the accent yeah. was. I was like, mm, I feel he like is, John would easily pick up that this is Han right now. <laughs> he is a British actor yeah. playing a German yeah. who is doing a fake American accent. Mm -hmm. Like, that, truth I mean, that's that is a way. Yeah, that's a truth that's impressive. Thespian. The other thing that I really, and, and this, this, Shout out to uh, movies that made us that that I really appreciate from that about Alan Rickman is um, so you know the scene at the end spo spoiler alert he he falls off the building um, he actually you know he did that stunt and and fell into a, a big oh yeah you know, I know what you're about to say yeah but like yeah they were gonna do it at the count of three and he was gonna like drop they dropped him on two. They yeah. never told him. So it was that genuine reaction. Look, yeah, that look of terror in his face, he thought his line broke mm -hmm. and that he was like genuinely falling and had no idea what was that happening. It makes for a great, uh, great scene. Too. Every time I see his face, I think about that. Like, how I do, I do want to point out one thing that this, this movie does a great job of kind of like dropping subtle hints of things that would pay off later on in the movie. Like, uh, Ellis, first of all, that guy was an annoying character I and Ellis. I was really glad yeah. to see him go. Uh, it's like that was the one like Haas is getting killed. I'm like, no, yeah, good on you, Hans. I think that made me like Hans a little bit more. Uh, <laughs> um, but when he kind of mentions that, uh, I forget what the uh, what what John's wife's name is, is it Helen or something like that. Uh, but but when she goes, oh, we got her a nice little Rolex or whatever, and then the Rolex ends up being what uh, uh, being uh, Hans's downfall. Um, I love stuff like that. I like the way they kind of drop in the the storyline with Al. Howell, uh, Reginald Vale Johnson's character of how he they kind of you know why aren't why are you just doing the disc jockey uh, desk yeah. jockey thing and then it, it pays off later on when he gets Carl. Uh, so I I really like the way they would set up things and then have it pay off later in the movie. I think uh, that's what makes this movie kind of stand uh, above most other action movies. At the end of the day, is how well written it is. Yeah, not not only like those kind of things that that pay off, but like put they put things into motion also that that happen. So like you know. The initial conversation that he has, uh, that John McClane has on the plane about, you know, the, the other guy saying the thing that relaxes you most is you take your shoes off and you roll circles uh, mm -hmm. in the carpet with your bare feet. He was doing that, and that's why he didn't have shoes on when when all the shooting started. And that's why, like, for way further down the line, he's running barefoot and then gets glass in his feet and all that kind of stuff. Like, all of that craziness oh. happened because of that very first original scene. Yeah, it's so, oh, it's very well layered. Right, right. Those kind of things. Oh, it's like, oh, it's so good. It's so good. Very good. Very good. <laughs> but what's really funny is, um, I it's it's funny you mentioned Ellis because I I didn't write this note on the rundown, but I immediately like I was writing notes like I always do, uh, while I was watching the movie, and I just put Ellis is such an asshole. Like, oh God, I hate him so much. <clears throat> but what's funny is because. You think about Ellis because he's more in the forefront. You don't even think about the guy that kind of gets, you know, cast to be the asshole, which is the reporter, who's the same guy from well, Ghostbusters. Yeah. I was just saying, oh, I also hate that reporter that threatens to like deport their yeah. or whatever. And then that like, gets in it. And then also tries to use like the sympathy card after, like, come on, just want to get that last little message out. Like, you could have played that card first before you threatened to call INS on the woman. Like, oh, oh I hate yeah. that guy. I He's, hated that guy. Yeah, and I mean, you're supposed to hate him because you were supposed yeah. to hate him at he Walter gets Peck in Ghostbusters. Yeah, yeah. He gets his yeah. he gets his comeuppance in both. He gets yeah. arrested in Ghostbusters and he gets punched in the face by Holly and uh, Die Hard. Yeah, <laughs> but 
But yeah, I, I mean, like I said, I, I don't want to create a big list, but there are just so many like moments to love about this movie. So many things, just like we were both saying with, you know, how how they pay off little things you don't think about as much. Like that conversation could have been a throwaway conversation with about relaxing by rubbing circles in the, in the carpet with your feet type of thing. But like they finished it. They took it to the, the furthest conclusion that it could possibly go. Well, he took his feet off or he took his shoes off and did it. And so it proved that it, it helped him. But now, an hour into the movie, he has no shoes on, and he's running through glass, and that's why he gets glass in his feet. Like, there's just so many things that in it that, that that are there that the writing you can really appreciate, like for having those thoughts down down the line, type of thing. Yeah, um, and even the little little things like when uh, going back to the scene where uh, Hans is kind of playing uh, the the hostage to, to John, and, you know, what's your name? And he goes, William uh, Bill Clay. Yeah. And then and then John looks up at the thing and sees Will Clay, William Clay or whatever it is, and he goes, "Okay, that check." Like he he probably kind of puts two and two together, but you you don't it it does a great job of kind of keeping you in suspense of whether John believes what he's saying yeah. or not, or if he's playing into it to like and it, but later on you know it reveals itself. But yeah, the, it's it, yeah the writing is just top notch in us. Yeah, it, it, it's all and and then the conclusion where he's got the the gun taped to his back. You don't see as an audience member, you don't see that. Until no. you know, the, the, no, it's all they, they do a good job of masking it. Yeah, you you don't see that as any kind of shot. It's just, yeah, it part, just awesome, just just awesome. Uh, but anyway, so now would be the time that we would normally go to predictions, and and I've as I've said this before in in past episodes of Retro Recaps, um, you know, spoiler alert, there are a bunch of sequels, um, yeah, like three, right? Four, three or four. Uh, I, I think there's. Five total at this point. So yeah, four sequels. There may be six. Anyway, um, I 110% recommend Die Hard with a Vengeance, which is the the third in in the the course of all of these. Not that all of the, not that like the sequels are bad. The second one, I I don't like it. I don't understand it. I don't know if they knew where they wanted to go with it. It kind of is, he's in an airport. Um, but the third one is great. It's it's back in New York City. It's John McClane. It's Samuel Jackson as as the the co star in in the movie, and it's Hans Gruber's brother. <laughs> so there's there's that uh, a revenge story, right? It's a definite connection back into the first one. It kind of ne like negates the second one even happened. Like it's awesome. Uh, so I strongly recommend you know just just skip the second one. Go to the third one. Go go die hard with a vengeance. Awesome, awesome movie. Um. But what I wanted to ask Rico, um, being that you know you haven't really watched any of the sequels and, and stuff like that, alternate universe stuff like that, what would you want to see in kind of a follow up to Die Hard? Like, nothing. Nothing. Just not, absolutely no not. connection. I, I, I never like like to me a sequel to this doesn't really intrigue me so much. I feel like it just stands well enough on its own because one. I just find it a, a little bit like repetitive if you just have this guy going around stopping terroristic plots all the time just because he just conveniently, conveniently happened to be there or something like that. Like what, you know, just this, this whole thing happened because he stumbled into this uh, Christmas party that he, he didn't think he was going to be invited to. And then, uh, you know, all this kind of goes down and, you know, it was like the, the little notch in their plan they didn't see coming, right? Like John being there is not something that Hans and them, right. uh, you know, foresaw. So it uh, ultimately threw a wrench in their plans. Like yep. there's only so many times you could do that and and not have it like kind of play itself out. It's almost like the Taken movies. <laughs> yeah. yeah, well, that's uh, but, uh, but you throw in a, a, a connecting tie like the like you know Hans' brother, something like that. Um, it, make it a little bit more personal. I think that could be intriguing for sure. Um, but yeah, to me, I feel like the movie just stands so well on its own that I just like I want to keep that in its own little bottle. And that way, like it's almost like the Jurassic Park movies, right? Like the, the first Jurassic Park movie is is like a masterpiece in my opinion, and then after that, like I think each movie just gets progressively worse and worse, and, and it almost like it almost makes you want like sours, like the, the 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 taste of the first one for me. But if I just watch the first one and then don't watch the other ones, I'm like, oh, I, I just love this movie. This I great. like Jurassic Lost World. Yeah. Lost World. I, it's okay. The, the it's sequel. okay. But I'm not. I'm not. I'm not huge on those the way I am on the first one. You know. Yeah. Uh, but. Yeah, that's that. I I really just think that this stands super well on its own, and just like you know, I'm gonna leave it there, and I'm gonna I'm gonna like this movie for what it is. Well, what I will say is is kind of just like what you said. Um, the third one with a vengeance kind of 
it has a direct connect. There is that that that, and there's there's almost like it changes the dynamic because you have not just John McClane, you have Samuel Jackson in there, and and he's there the entire time. He gets kind of sucked into it, and there are legit reasons why he got sucked into it, and why John McClane got sucked into it in the first place, and. It's back in New York, so he didn't have to like just appear somewhere. Sam director is the first one too that I'm looking at too, so that's also very. I cool. could also help it because all the other ones are directed by other people. Yeah, I will say like and and look, I've watched all of them, and and there's one with Justin Long in it. I think it's Live Free or Die Hard. Was that the one with Kevin Smith in it? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Timothy Oliphant is, is in it too. Yeah, I, I know that just because of Kevin Smith's uh, rivalry with Bruce Willis after Cop Out. So that's always been, yeah. uh, a funny story to hear. That one isn't bad. It's still it's still a movie. Like it's it's still it's still like in the realm it's of a, it's a movie. <laughs> no, that's the highest phrase you can get. But, but here's what I'll say. The the best part about Die Hard and to the same extent, Die Hard with a Vengeance is Bruce Willis's John McClane is a, a a human. He's just a cop, so he he does have you know more intuitions and and he's been trained and 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 stuff like that. So he's a step above like you know if you or I ever got to put into that kind of situation type of thing. Mm -hmm. Um, as you go past with a vengeance, he becomes almost like a superhero type of thing. That's like. Yeah, right. I think that's also right. like I almost say how Fast and the Furious goes from like right. the the high school yeah. to like we're, we're going to space. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Like okay. in 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 Live Free or Die Hard, he crashes a cop how car into a helicopter, this up? and then they yeah. kind of throw the, they go down a rabbit hole. I yeah, get it. He, okay, got it. He shoots a helicopter or he shoots a, a cop car into a helicopter and blows up the helicopter. So, well, since yeah. I don't have to rent. The other ones, maybe I'll give the other uh, movies a shot. <laughs> I'm telling you, definitely watch with a vengeance because I think it works perfect as a direct follow up. It also takes place in the summer, so it's like cool, like you know, the rest of the year happened type of thing, and then they went back to New York. Like, so you can <laughs> completely skip over the second one, go go to the third one, and then like if you want to have fun with Kevin Smith and Justin Long and and Bruce Willis, then then li live free and die hard is is there. <laughs> it's there to enjoy. Yeah, I'll uh, or you mean uh, a good day to die hard, right? A good day to die hard is the last one, and I think that oh, one is that the bad one. That one I've never I I've watched. Oh, okay, okay, you okay? Leave for okay. Never mind. Forget. Live free or die hard is when is where Tiff, uh Timothy Oliphant is the, is the villain in it. And oh, yeah, who likes me some Oliphant? Uh, Kevin Smith and Justin Long are kind of like. They get sucked into it, but Bruce Willis is basically almost a superhero. Yeah, I'll give it a try. I'll give it a try and see if I change my tune. Yeah. Anyway, the only thing I was gonna say as far as predictions and and stuff like that, like like I said, I I mean all of these movies, well, at least through with a vengeance, were out before I even knew Die Hard existed. Basically, um, so I got to, I I got to basically you know watch the first three you know in a row when i when i kind of actually was interested in them and stuff like that and even uh live free or die hard was out pretty long uh, at this point a pretty long time ago it was only justin long was doing you know a lot of movies at once type of thing um the era of justin long. yeah but what i would have liked to see successfully done at least is almost like a a kind of passing of the torch and i think we really haven't had a movie franchise kind of successfully do that um, and kind of keep things up. Like, like what I think of is, you know, James Bond, James Bond has had so many different James Bonds and, and still have had, you know, high points in all of the different bonds kind of careers. Basically I would have liked to have seen kind of a passing of the torch where we could have had more diehard movies and it didn't have to be, like where we ramped it up to the point where, you know, Bruce Willis had to be a superhero because we just had to amp him up over and over again. I would have liked to have seen something like where there was a connection where it, it you know, could have still been called a diehard movie, but it didn't amp up the, the, the main person to basically be a superhero. It just was someone in, in a, a like either a police officer or a fire. Like Argyle. Argyle, there we go. <laughs> There's the Disney Plus series we need. What happened to Argyle? And that was, that has like me watching this. I was like, is Argyle from Stranger Things named after Argyle from Die Hard? Because <laughs> it is an eighties reference, so I it would is. imagine that's a good. And he does, he is kind of like the getaway driver of the of the crew. I mean, so. he is. 
Very well could be a nod there. <laughs> but but yeah, I mean, I, I that's the only thing I kind of wished because now this series um is kind of you know it, it kind of wrote itself into a box like they they had to just kind of exactly like you were saying with the Fast and Furious franchise it kind of had to keep amping itself up instead of you know kind of shifting characters and and shifting stuff where they could have kept the scenarios kind of more realistic mm -hmm. type of thing they just had to keep building on on top of each other cuz they they kept the same cast and just kept going and going so that's what they had to do i just kind of wish we could have gotten a handoff and kind of you know, kept it on the street level that I appreciate with, I mean, it's still outlandish. Like there's the John Wick of its time. Yeah, exactly. That's, you, you know what? That's a perfect example. And, and, you know, John Wick, I don't know what they're going to do moving forward. I, I do know they have the, the series that's on Peacock um, about the hotel and, and, oh, and yeah. they, they kind of have, you know, different directions they could go, but th even with that, they no, didn't Arena, have a, a movie coming out too uh, with, um, Oh, I forget. Is it and Armist or something like that? Someone else in it. Mm -hmm. That's gonna be really good. Yeah. So we'll see how that runs and 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 see if they have a successful handoff. But I, that's just kind of the thing that I've noticed is we haven't really had like a, a proper handoff with with kind of a movie franchise where it was able to kind of keep continuing to build after the the main star got to a certain point and and kind of I just I kind of wished we we still could live in that like diehard universe type of thing. Mm -hmm. So, but as we always say, that's what we think. Let us know in the comments below, which diehard have you watched and which do you like the most? Hopefully it's the first one, but, <laughs> but with a vengeance is a strong, strong uh, runner up and is diehard in your holiday movie must watch every season. Like, like it is for me. Or are you watching it? You know, sometimes like Rico is. But as always, don't forget to like, subscribe, and turn on notifications to hear about all of our latest audio and video podcast releases. Happy holidays! Merry Christmas! Bye, everybody! Popping Off presents That Recap Show.